Okay. okay. Ich bin Brello von Away From Life und interview jetzt Zach von Rise Against. So. Hi. Hey Zach. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We have a, yeah. we have a distance. Yeah, a little yeah. distance. So you played Esso Sex and Dreisig in Berlin Kreuzberg yesterday. Yeah. Really hot show. Was it, were you there? Did you go? I've been there. Oh, yeah. Oh God. Yeah, it was nice. I mean, <clears throat> it just, it was awesome to be able to do that because we, you know, especially in Germany, we do, you know, the band does well in Germany, which is great. Um, so to be able to come back and do a club show, the band had played there God, it might have been, I wasn't in the band. Yeah, I joined Rise Against in 2007. But that band hasn't been there in forever. I did play SO36 uh, when I was in Guar. I, was, I used to oh, play yeah. in Guar. And we played there. And it was, I remember being similar to last night. And I had rubber on my face and, you know, a dumb costume. Um, I mean, an awesome costume. Uh, but, yeah, it was awesome. It was great. And I'm so glad we got a chance to do it, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's uh, also a special place for Berlin alternative culture. Totally. And, you know, it, I was thinking about that last night because the the sort of, in America, we had CBGB. And, you know, I was lucky enough to have played CBGB a few times and be at CBGB. And, goes, and I got that same feeling, and I, and I know that that is sort of the same historical relevance, you know, that you guys have with SO36. So it's really important, you know. Yeah. It's history. And now CBGB's is a fucking, can I cuss? I can cuss? Okay. Of course. It's a fucking a John Barbados, you know, clothing store. And I went in there, uh, my singer, uh, Tim and I went in and this girl comes up to help me. You know, can I help you out? And then she's trying to tell us the history of CBGB. And she's like 20. And I was like, yeah, I actually played here when it was CBGB, you know. Uh And it's a fucking John Barbados, you know. So anyway, uh, so it was, it was just awesome to be a part of it. I mean, actually played it. Yeah. And um, I saw a picture of Rise Against at that time without you playing. Yeah. Uh, playing at SS36. Yeah. Uh, they look completely different. Yeah. But how do you think the band has changed Age. since then? <laughs> the Aged. Age. Yeah. And I'm in the band. Um, <clears throat> no. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's four dudes. <clears throat> that have been fortunate enough to weather storms and, and stay, hopefully stay relevant and, and keep putting out records and keep doing what we get to do. And I say what we get to do because it is such a, a you know, it sounds like such a canned answer, but it's, it is an honor and a privilege to be able to keep, kind of keep showing up and getting people interested enough to come to your shows and, and listen to your music um, that they still give a shit ever, you know, every time you, put out a body of work or whatever <clears throat> yeah. it's a special thing uh but then life happens you know people get married and have children everybody in this band has kids except me i'm married um and so that sort of happens and then you know when you're a kid this at least the way we all did it you know you everything is this you get in a van and you leave for your entire life <clears throat> this is all you do and then a life starts happening elsewhere um And so things, those things change, you know. Um, but it's about you got to keep your eye on the ball, as we say in America. Is just kind of realize, remember who you are and what you do, and no matter what's happening everywhere else. Of course. Yeah. And today we're sitting here in a famous Berlin hotel. Yeah. It's yeah, five star hotel. Yeah. Less known for punk and alternative culture, but for wealth. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah and yeah. business. Yeah. Um, doesn't it feel odd to play in a punk band and giving interviews in s such places? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could, yeah. I think it'd probably be a little better if we're doing it at the SO36. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it does, you know. Um, <clears throat> there's no real good answer for that. It's, it's just, you know, being guys in, in your 40s, which is what we are, um, you tend to like a certain amount of comfort <laughs> uh but you know that's the way it is uh but there's also you know rise against happens to be a band that's also on a major label yeah um albeit a very cool one that has given this band creative and artistic freedom i don't think it would have worked out otherwise and so um there is a way to sort of meld that and the music business is such a it's it's sort of at this point it's almost the wild wild west you know it's <laughs> no one really knows what's going on yet you know it's it's everybody's just kind of trying to to stay 
uh, on the current, you know, because things are happening all the time that are just making things free and, and which is great. I mean, I think it's I'm, I think it's awesome. Um, it's art, so it's however anybody wants to consume it, and maybe it shouldn't be commercialized and it shouldn't be a commodity. Um, so for us to have a relationship with a label that is willing to kind of be a partner with us, and you know, yeah. that's great. The byproduct of that is certain things like the nice hotels happen and stuff, <laughs> which is which is nice. Isn't the isn't yeah. bad. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, he's got to do it. Okay, so uh, let's talk about you. New album. Yeah. You're releasing it in June, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. called Wolves. Yeah. Uh, when did you start writing it? Uh, last year, <clears throat> um, you know, we were kind of separately. Everybody was just kind of doing stuff on their own for a while. But we did take a little bit more time than usual to between records. Um, but we started in earnest about last fall, August, September. Um, And just getting together, you know, because for us, we, we live geographically in different areas in the States. Brandon, our drummer, lives in Denver. I live in Texas. And Joe and Tim live in Chicago, where the band started. Um, so it's, 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 it's a hassle. It's kind of hard for us to all get together, you know, to fly. Uh, so we always have to kind of pick and choose our times. But, uh, yeah, we started in about August, and it, you know, started really uh, sort of taking shape around that time. And then we recorded in Nashville with a guy named Rick at Rescue Linux. Uh, we did not go with Bill Stevenson uh, from Descendants and All yep. and Black Flag. Um, for no other reason with the, just the fact that we had done, we've done so many records with Bill. He's, it's such a comfort zone for us. He's, he's the fifth member, he's our family. <clears throat> oh, we've loved uh, every record we've ever done with him. It's been this great rewarding experience. It just, Just felt like, oh, let's try one with somebody else for a change and see how that goes. And it went well. It went great. And uh, But we started recording in about November yep. uh, through about February. So, you know, we were taking time and stuff. But, but yeah. But then Trump got elected. Yeah, no was shit. There, was there an effect on the album? Absolutely. Did you have to rewrite things? Yeah, there was no... It, you know, oddly enough, it sort of fit with the sort of tone that we'd already started working on. And I can't speak as to the lyrics, I don't, yeah. I don't write the lyrics in our band, but um, it did sort of, the, where the, we were already kind of going, it sort of fit. Because, you know, the election just in general, even with before, the, just the campaign, everything was, you know, there was so much bullshit happening in the news <clears throat> with the Hillary and the, you know, Bernie and all that stuff, that it was sort of charging the atmosphere anyway. So I really didn't see Trump getting elected, honestly. I, I thought Hillary had it, just like every other liberal that I know. We just thought we had it. And I was just as surprised as anybody. My wife um, is from Mexico and yeah. and uh, was really worried about what was going to happen. Of course. Uh, because she's a, a resident. She's not a citizen of the U.S. And so... Um, I was in Nashville, we were recording, and I remember she was just texting me because I wasn't watching the election because I started going bad, you know, we were like, oh my God, so I just, I disengaged, and she's just texting me, the stats were, stop, stop, you know, and it's been a hassle, you know, it's been crazy since then, so it did definitely charge the record and the lyrics and the idea and the concept and everything, so yeah. I mean, we got that out of it. If that's yeah. one good thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, think so. Yeah, um, yeah. You want to name the um, album "Morning in America"? Yeah, I think w would it have been a different album without Trump? I mean, <clears throat> it would have been a different album without Trump. There's a song on the album called "Morning in America," and <clears throat> I think the uh, the general the initial sentiment was like, and again, I can't speak for Tim, but. <clears throat> was to name it that because we were disillusioned, we were depressed, we were, uh, and then the idea was like, well, maybe turn this around, maybe decide that this is the time where you do need to protest, you do need to speak up, you do need to engage civil disobedience, and, and the idea of the wolves concept is to, you know, turn it back on them and to speak up and do what you can. You know? Of course, yeah. of course. Um, but isn't the election of Trump at least a uh, lucky shot for political bands like you absolutely i mean it you know <clears throat> it's like take a band like rage against the machine yeah. for instance they were a band happening during the clinton years before george bush even got elected you know so it was 
that w we could have used that band now. We could have used that band during the year. So for a band like us, it definitely it's 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 good. I mean, it's good for yeah. us. It definitely gives us sort of fuel uh, for the fire, um, and will give us you know something to do <laughs> uh, with ourselves for the next few years. I mean, I'm hoping that he doesn't make a full term, you know, and by the looks of it, it doesn't look like he's going to. Of course, that creates another set of problems because then Mike Pence steps up, which, you know, immediately uh, LGBTQ uh, issues are going to go down the shitter. Women's rights issues are going to go down the shitter. Because, um, you know, so we'll see how it goes. But I just, I've never been this sort of delusioned and disenchanted with a political process in the states and i've been pretty upset with it before but this is yeah. this is like nothing we've ever seen yeah so it's worse like the bush era it's worse. worse i mean i found myself like reminiscing like oh, yeah. i remember bush you know and that, when that was happening we were all fucking you know we couldn't believe it um but at least he was just in kind of a dumbass you know he's just an idiot being from texas you know he's he's actually not from texas but He calls himself a Texan. And I grew up with that guy. Like, that was my uncle's. And, you know, it's like a uh, fucking blowhard asshole. You know, so you couldn't you didn't really take it seriously. This, you better take seriously because it's fucking dangerous, you know. This guy, isn't. he doesn't belong to a political party, even though they say it's a Republican. He belongs to his own self. You know, he's going to go rogue and do some weird shit. And who knows what the fuck that's going to be, you know, so... It's scary. It's it's a scary time, you know. Of course. The guys of course. in my band have kids, and I, I know they're worried for their futures, you know. Yeah, and um, I mean, uh, Trump isn't the only psychopath in charge. Yeah. There are a lot more. Is the whole world getting mad? I think so, and I think I think because of his election, it's <clears throat> these psychopathic assholes are thinking that it's okay. Like in the states, we're seeing this rash of like racial crimes and you know I think just a few days ago a guy in Portland killed he slashed two guys throats almost killed another slashed another guy's throat and it's because they think their guy won so now they can get away with this shit they can uh, use racial slurs and they can do these sort of hate crimes and they think well our guy won we're, we're fine it's, this is okay and I think that's awful you know I mean I think we had eight years of this amazing you know I'll say amazing Uh, presidency that was sort of keeping everybody in check and we had this you know this person to sort of look up to and now it's people are just again I'll use the term wild wild west it's like they're, they're just fucking you know it's sort of charging the worst you know it's the lowest common denominator and it's giving these people a voice it's terrible of course yeah, yeah. So um, you played in a lot of angry bands before yeah. Rise Against yeah. and Rise Against I think if you compare uh, the new songs on Wolf uh, to the songs from maybe um, uh, uh, Siren songs of counterculture, uh -huh. um, where's the anger gone? Um, you know, again, that's a, t that's a question for Tim because it's lyrics. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but um, where is the anger gone? Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah. I mean, I think for him, you know, and it's hard to speak for him, but yeah. I think for this new record, the, the anger has definitely gone toward the political party and, 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 and what's happening in the States right now, which has been, uh, you know, the sort of uh, narrative through all of our records. But I think it's just the, the, the general idea is that anyone in power that's using it for their powers for... For bad and not good you know yeah the bullies the the sort of all of us were outcast kids you know we were kids that got the shit kicked out of us in school and we didn't fit in we weren't liked we weren't popular and so I think it's hard not to carry that into your adult life and I think that's what this band has always kind of sung about and used politics as sort of a way to frame that of course yeah. uh, and if we want to see something good about this time um, You said you were outcast kid too. There yeah. are a lot of outcast kids out there. Yeah. Is there a new era of punk rock and hardcore on the rise? Let's I think hope. So? I mean, <clears throat> let's hope. You know, I I'm also guilty of not really paying too much attention to what you know newer things are happening. But I mean, you know, that's the one good thing is that art in you know in general usually is pretty good when the politics are fucked up. So. You know, it definitely happened in the 80s with Reaganomics and all the great punk bands that came out of that. So let's hope. I think we're on the precipice of it right now. You know, this asshole just took office. So 
hopefully if he's going to have to stay in office, maybe we'll see a lot more, you know, great music and art and movies and, you know, okay. we'll, see. we'll see, hopefully. Yeah. So let's hope the world gets better at and let's hope that. there will be a lot more punk rock yeah, and hardcore out there. At least that, hopefully, yeah. So, okay, I think cool. that's it. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs>